Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us again this morning for our Trojan Bite Size webinar. This morning we're going through SharePoint and Declan Cook is joining me again to go through the technical aspect of this with you. Uh, just before he starts, a quick run through as always. If you do want to ask questions, you can use the panel on the right hand side of your screen. And if you're having any technical issues, there is a troubleshooting page there as well that you can, can access and hopefully that will solve some of the problems for you. We will be sending out a recording of the webinar afterwards and a copy of the slide deck. So if you want to, you don't take any notes, you can get the copy afterwards. And if you do have any questions, don't be afraid to ask them. We'll try and get through them all today as much as we can. But for now, I'll pass you over to Declan. Great stuff, Anne. Thanks a million. And welcome everyone to uh, this webinar on Microsoft SharePoint. Um, it's fair to say 20 minutes or half an hour will do very well to cover a lot of what SharePoint can do, but I'll cover the basics and kind of hopefully give you a feel to what the application is like. It is absolutely huge. It has unlimited applications across different organizations and it's very customizable. So um, without further, further ado, we'll just uh, go ahead and I'll show you some features here. So. Look, what is SharePoint? It's There's no kind of one line description of it because it does so much, but I'll go through all the various points here. Um, so SharePoint's a custom website. It's used to organize, share, and access information from any device. Um, we're specifically talking about SharePoint Online, which is part of your Office 365 um, subscription. So within SharePoint, you can have information can be in the form of your documents or news feeds or links to external sources, web pages, social media accounts, anything like that. So I'll try in the demos just give you a feel for that, how you can link to and centralize all your information to one kind of landing page for your company. Um, as I said, SharePoint becomes a central portal for you to access all relevant resources. So it's um, it's a great page if you had a, quite a large organization and when you open up your web browser, if SharePoint becomes your landing page, it can just be just the one page you access and has all your relevant resources available to you at the click of a button. So it's it takes some organization to get it to that level, but it's um, it's very powerful, as I said. Um, if you were on the webinar last week with for OneDrive, you'll notice the SharePoint and OneDrive have very similar similar functionality when it comes to files, uh, working with documents and files and all that, because it is essentially the, the same technology. OneDrive is basically SharePoint, but it's a personal version of SharePoint and it really is only for files and folders. Um, a big selling point for SharePoint is mobility. So as long as you have a device in your hand and you have internet access, you'll be able to access your SharePoint site and you'll be able to access your documents at all times. It doesn't matter what country you're in or whatever, you'll always have access to it. Um, as I said, it's available to any users who have a Microsoft 365 Business Basic license and above, which is anyone who uses Office 365 has that license. So um, you can rest assured that it's it more than likely is available to you at the moment. Um, SharePoint, in terms of storage, you get one terabyte of storage across all your SharePoint sites, which is quite a large amount of information. Most small businesses wouldn't even have close to a terabyte of information, uh, especially as um, if you're working with just Excel or Word documents or PDFs, you certainly you'll do well to fill up all that storage. Um, it's a good security feature which comes um, out of the box for which uh, SharePoint is the ransomware protection feature. So obviously if you have 10 people or 20 people accessing the SharePoint site and only one person gets infected with ransomware, it could compromise your entire data set, which obviously is a bit of an issue and you can't trust the data there that's in your SharePoint site. Is something else infected? Um, it, it's hard to know. Now SharePoint does have built in antivirus scanning as well, so it's unlikely to be compromised, but it's always good to have this feature, the rollback feature, where if you got attacked today and you lost all your information, was encrypted through ransomware or whatever, you could roll back the entire library to the way it was yesterday or a week ago up to the past previous 30 days. So it's a, it's a very um, powerful feature and it's not one you'd use lightly. You have to make a serious decision on it if you are going to roll back, but at least it gives you the peace of mind that your data is is safe in, in the cloud there. Um, as I mentioned as well, so it's available across on all mobile devices, laptops and desktops using the cross-platform file syncing um, technologies. 
Um, a great feature as well is the online file collaboration. So if you have one Excel document or multiple ones, you can have multiple users in the one file at the same time and you can track what they're doing and they can track what you're doing. And uh, it makes it very easy just for for file collaboration or indeed if you're if you're going to join us for our next week's webinar on Teams, you'll see how we can take that to the next level and Teams is built on top of SharePoint and OneDrive and everything else so it's a good one to finish off it brings all those technologies together um, I'll also show you how to go through uh, secure file sharing essentially just you can share files among yourselves or you can invite guests users who are external to your organization to come in and edit a file or view it or whatever you need to do with it and i'll show you how to access your data either through an online portal or through the traditional way through a windows file explorer where, which most people are familiar with and one final point on it as well you're better off using the windows the windows 10 desktop client if you're using Windows 7, it's a non-runner really these days. Uh, Windows 7 is out of support, so Windows 10 and using the files on demand features built into the desktop client basically means you can you have access to all your files over File Explorer, but you're not carrying all the files around on your device because you obviously it would be a, a lot of files in there. So the only files that get synced down are the ones that, that you're actively working on. So I'll, I'll demo that to you as well. Um, if we continue on, so just what I'm going to cover today is logging into your SharePoint site, how to navigate or kind of use the breadcrumbs to go over and back and access different sites, how to follow a SharePoint site. So Microsoft call it following. I call it how you favorite a site because most people just like to have a favorite. You click on it and obviously it's there in your list of favorite sites to access, but Microsoft used the word follow. Um, some use cases, if you were thinking of how would this apply to my business, you can have it for social events, for news and events. You can have a feed on the web page there that's there's announcements and events coming up, or you can link it, as I said, to your social media pages like Facebook, Twitter. You can bring in all those web parts and it'll be a very active page if you bring in uh, content from all sorts of different sources to your, your landing page. It can also become a very good central store for company policy documents or whatever else you might want to make available to all um, staff that they just need to have access to at any time like um, another good feature is uh, holiday request forms you can this is all very customizable they can be used for anything so you can create a form you just click on a link and someone who wants to request holidays can click on it and um, they submit a form and the relevant person who approves your annual leave for holidays approves it and it goes up on a on a public calendar so it's it's quite it's quite good that feature as well document libraries as i said that's very close to the what we were doing with OneDrive, and i'll go through that as well and also if you had sales reps on the got on the road and you had product images you can easily have galleries there and it works very well across the likes of an ipad if they were on the road and they were just trying to demonstrate or show the different types of products you have you can have a product image gallery and um, that your guys can use you know so that's only a handful of things. There's countless amount of things SharePoint can do, but they're the most common ones that people use it for. And I'll show you how to sync a library to your local machine for accessing your files as well. So in we'll also cover um, sharing files with external users, but by default that is actually turned off. So you would have to request from Trojan or an admin to enable that feature because you really don't want every staff member being able to share all your company data with external people so that is off by default which is a good security setting but if you enable this you just have to think of the possible consequences of um data loss or whatever you know so just it's an important setting just to keep in mind but um i'll show you how to create a share that's restricted to specific people setting expiries on shares of files and folders and removing shares that are no longer needed. Um, I'll also go through using the Office applications and how to access your, that should say, SharePoint data. Um, it's pretty much copied from the OneDrive session there. So this, that feature is the exact same in OneDrive as it is in SharePoint. So you have your autosave features, your version history, 
and um, how you can share a file like above, but directly from your office application. Version history is very good. It keeps around, I think it's 500 copies of um, every single change you make becomes a new version of a document. So if you mess up a document, you can roll back to a previous one, up to 500 versions previous. So it's a very powerful feature and I'll show you how you can you can roll back there. Um, so with that, I'll just jump in and show you how to uh, navigate SharePoint. So I'll just uh, get logged in here. So this is just my remote machine here. And essentially, if you just go to office.com in a web browser, if you use a modern web browser like Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge or something like that, try to avoid using Internet Explorer because it's kind of, it's out of, while it's still in support, it isn't as good as the modern kind of browsers and SharePoint works better in Chrome or Microsoft Edge. So when you log in here, you put in your email address and password to sign in and you're presented with all your Office 365 applications. These are all the online versions that you get with your um, your license. So in order to access SharePoint, you literally click on your SharePoint tile here and it'll load it up here in the tab. Now, you don't have to come in this way. You can just save that link as a bookmark or a favorite in your browser and um, you'll be able to jump to it straight away. But obviously you'd have to sign in directly in here. So you don't have to go through 10 different hoops to get to where you need to go. You can add them into your favorites directly and uh, it makes it easier to navigate. So as I mentioned before, um, these are the sites that you can favorite or as Microsoft call it following. So if you have a star on the particular site, I'll show you how to enable that. It comes up on the sites that you're following. So it's just a central portal where you know you can jump into the different sites. A lot of places only use one site, but larger organizations might have might break out sites to different um, departments like for sales and marketing or leadership teams or different groups of people for purchasing or whatever your requirement is. So there's no real limit on the amount of sites that you can create or use, but just realize the more you create, that means there's more administration in keeping them all up to date. So you might just settle on starting with one from the outset and let it expand as, as, as necessary going forward. So, um, what I wanted to show you here is one particular site that just to give you an idea of what can be put into a SharePoint site. Um, if we come along here, this is just a demo site. Contoso is uh, Microsoft's kind of demo environment. So that's where we get the company name from. But you can have it um, kind of the look and feel is very modern, like a normal website these days. You've kind of your uh, navigation bar along the top and you have your different menus and you can have any link. You literally, it's very customizable. The admin can just edit any of these links here and point them to wherever you, where you want to go, whether that's an external site or, or an internal SharePoint site or even a file, you can have anything placed behind those links. So if you're thinking about creating a SharePoint site, just kind of think in your head how you want it to flow, the navigation, the links, how you want it all to come together and what you want to display. This is known as a, this particular site is a communication site. There's another type of site which is known as a team site, but this is a communication one where you can have news coming up, um, relevant news to your organization or events. So especially if you had like a social club or something like that, you can have your events here coming up. Um, and they'll display when, say, if, if they're only four weeks out from coming up. So it's a constant reminder and you can go in and look at the entire events list by clicking on see all. But you can have reports display on your main page as well here. So it, it literally is, it's kind of plug and play. You pick what you want to display on the website and um, someone just has to manage what, what the content is, you know, but it just gives you an idea of what you can do with it. Um, Another feature, just as I mentioned before, about is requesting time off. So if you had a large organization and they report to specific managers or you had to say the sales team wanted to request time off, you can give them a link here, which just for argument's sake is requesting time off. When they click on that, that'll bring them to a form which would look something similar to this where they now you just created this yesterday, but you'd obviously the forms. It's another part of SharePoint where you can just um, in, you can integrate a form into SharePoint where someone can just request time off. So you just fill in the two required fields, how many weeks you want off and the, the starting date. And you submit that form. 
that will go as an email to the relevant person to authorise your annual leave. And it also gets placed into an Excel document so people can track people's um, holiday requests. Obviously, it's not just for holiday requests. You can have any sort of forms in there for gathering information from, from external sources, like what you'll see at the end of this webinar. We'll be asking you to fill out a form to um, give us feedback on this webinar and the other ones in the past as well. So like forms are very powerful as well. And it's just another example of where it all kind of sits into SharePoint, where it pulls all the information that you're working with into one central location. So that's a kind of a brief overview of how you can use it for something other than just documents and files and all that. Um, what I might do is jump into uh, your document libraries. This is where most people, if you are using it, you'll be more familiar with um, using SharePoint for just accessing your Word and Excel documents. So we have a sales and marketing team here in this Contoso company. And again, this is another separate SharePoint site, so it can actually be both. It can be news and events, and you can have quick links here on the right hand side to different um, resources, like whether it be supplier websites or whatever you need to use. Or, or as I said, you can put Twitter feeds and Facebook feeds in here as well, all customizable. But I'll just stick with going to your document library. So you click on documents here on the left hand side, and this is essentially where you store all your files and folders. And you just see them there. It's nothing special, but like it's just very handy. But the, the big selling point, as I said, is you don't need to be in the office to access your files. You can be anywhere on the road. You can use a mobile phone with the OneDrive app, or you can use an iPad or a Galaxy tablet or something like that. They all have a SharePoint. The SharePoint app doesn't actually allow you to access the files, which is a bit of a funny thing. You have to use the OneDrive app to access the SharePoint files. So if you do download the SharePoint app, don't be surprised that you can't access your files. You have to use, as I said, the OneDrive app because it's what's it's the application that's used to access your different uh, files. So you can you can use your online versions of Word and Excel here to open up documents and edit them online as necessary as per the OneDrive um, webinar. You may find that is very limited. You literally have only very few editing tools here. You can move things around, change colors and stuff like that, but the version of Word online is very limited, but it might suit particular users, but it, it's probably good enough just to get your content and to be able to read it very quickly without having to um, open it up or download the file that's available there for you online, no problem. And the same with any PowerPoint files or Excel files or whatever. But the one of the best things you can do is actually sync that library. If it's a library you use a lot, you can sync it to your local machine. So at least then you don't have to work within this web page. You can just use it the same way that you've always used it through File Explorer or through Excel or Word. And it just keeps the experience the same as what you've been used to over the years, because it is a big jump to start kind of working online solely. So it's kind of better to to keep things um, locally on your machine. So in order to do that, like once you're in your document library, all you do is hit your sync button. And that will call up the OneDrive client. Now I've already synced this library already, but what will happen is. You will get this company name, which is Contoso, that could be Trojan or anyone else, whatever your company name, and you see that little icon, that's the symbol for SharePoint, and the library that you're syncing down appears here. And you can see all the files and folders that are online, so you don't need to have this open or whatever. When you just put up your laptop, your OneDrive little agent down here in the bottom right is constantly syncing these files. And just to understand the different statuses here, so that little cloud icon means the file isn't actually on your PC or laptop. It's actually up in the cloud. And when you double click on it, it'll download it and it'll show that it is available on your machine. So if you have it available on the device, it means if you don't have internet access, you can still open the file and edit it as necessary. But and when you get internet access again, it will sync it back up. 
Um, so that's your cloud icon status, and then you've got this kept available on your local device status here. And you see this little sync icon as well, sync pending. That's like that because I actually have this file open at the moment here in Excel. And so any change I make on this, it is always synced up to the up to the cloud. And essentially what happens here is every change I make, as I said, is synced up. If other users are on that file and accessing that file at the same time, they will be able to see those changes live. So I'll try and demonstrate that here as well by we just open that file online. So this is Q4 marketing analysis. So if I open up this file here online, just gives you a, a very basic introduction to how file collaboration works. So we make sure I'm on the same tab here, other project with project information here. And as per usual, when you try and do something live, it doesn't work straight away, but it might it might come along there anyways. But um, essentially what you would see here is I'm online and I'm in this cell here. But when you're in Excel, you would see that you can see my username up in that cell and it's working away. But look, sometimes it takes a while, depending on broadband speed and all that, to update the, the different changes. But we'll try and put in a, a value there and see does it work? But it's going up online straight away. It might not. We'll come back to that in a second, anyways. So, look, that was a bad example, but at least you kind of get an idea that multiple people can work on the same file at the same time. Um, I want to also show you how to share files and folders from within your SharePoint library. So, at the moment, none of these files are shared with people, but you can share a file directly with a person literally by right clicking on it and go to share. When that loads up, you get a few different icons, uh, options. But as I said, you won't have the option to share to external users straight away because um, that's turned off by default. So there's your options there. So that's grayed out anyone with the link. If you want that to be enabled, that you can share any file from in here to an external recipient, you need to talk to us to enable it and we'll be getting you to sign a form to say you're happy with the risks associated with that. But um, at the moment you can share a file here and anyone within your organization will be able to access it or you can invite specific people to access the file as well so um, we can just hit apply you can also prevent them from editing the file and you can also prevent them from downloading it as well so there's a couple of good controls there and once you apply that you can enter in the name of the people that can receive the, they'll receive an email directly and I'll just put in a message here. And send it. Now that has been shared with a particular user. If that user shared that link with someone else, they won't be able to access that file. It's restricted to the individual recipient. So that's it's it's good in that way that it doesn't just make it wide open. OneDrive is a bit more flexible and it is wide open because it's viewed as personal data um, per person. But um, with SharePoint, it's viewed as company data and is, is more secure and more restricted um, settings on it. So if you want to turn off a share, if you don't want it shared anymore, all you do is right click again and go to share here. And you can click the three dots up here for more options and you get manage access. And from in here, you can see this is the link that I created earlier. You can click on that and hit the X. And that means once you delete that link, that file is no longer available to that person that you shared it with. So um, it's no harm to review who you've shared files with from time to time, just to make sure that you just haven't left them wide open to people. But it's, it's very easy. It's easier to do a OneDrive. It's pretty much the same in SharePoint, but as I said, you have those restrictions and I wouldn't advise turning that on um, 
unless you had a very specific use case. Um, if we go back into the office application here, uh, actually there, it's working there now. See that blue cell? That's me there in online. So you can see the difference there. So that's two users that are in on the file at the same time. So any changes I make here will be updated live online and it has updated that few numbers I put into that cell. So look, that's just probably an internet issue I'm having there, but usually that is pretty much instant. I had Anne editing a PowerPoint document earlier on for me with the same technology and every new icon or graphic she loaded in, I could see it straight away on my computer. So it's it's very powerful. So just to jump into one or two other things um, with Excel or even Word is the same or any other Office application as these features is the versioning of files. So if you go file and info, you can click here, you can go to the version history. And there's all the versions of this file that have been modified. And you can open that version of that file. And you can compare the information. So if you do happen to delete an entire tab at the bottom, you can copy it out of here and copy it back into the live document. Or your other option is to actually just click the restore button and that restores this document as it is in this state and overwrites all the, the live versions of it. So um, as I said, it will keep up to 500 versions of the file and it's it's different than your kind of un undo button where it, the undo button only works while you're within the document and working on it. But if you close that document, you can't undo any of the changes anymore. So that's where your version history comes in and you can control all your, your history and recall all the changes. And you can also see who edited the document as well. So if you, you can blame someone for ruining a, an Excel document you spent weeks working on by just looking at the last person who uh, edited the document. But I wouldn't recommend uh, attacking someone on that basis. But, you know, it's just it's a handy feature that um, you can use. And also just to keep an eye on up here, you see this auto save option up here in the top left. Make sure that is on at all times. If you turn that off, it means you're not syncing live up to the cloud anymore. So if it's off and someone else is working on the file elsewhere, they'll make changes, but they could end up making a change in the same cell that you're working on. And you'll end up with two documents because there's a conflict of information there. So um, always leave autosave on that it's always up to date and all changes are synced across all users all the time. Otherwise, you'll end up with a bit of a mess trying to merge documents and that's not really where you want to be. So look, a lot of the times you mightn't be even having multiple people on a file, but it's good. Autosave feature is great. If your laptop crashed, it will be bang up to date in the cloud to get your data exactly where you left off. So you don't have to worry about saving the document as you go. So every change is automatically saved. Um, and also the last feature then as well is to share a file the exact same way as what I showed you from Windows Explorer. You can go file and share and you have all the same sharing options from in here as we did with File Explorer that um, you can you can send it as a link or you can send it as a, uh, an email or you can just send it directly from within this little sharing portal as well. So there's some of the features there. I hope um, I, I can't really get in too in depth because I'd be here for the next two days trying to show you every feature that's available. But there's the most they're the most used features that are available within SharePoint in terms of file collaboration and, and using the SharePoint site as a news feed or whatever. It's all very powerful stuff. So um, hopefully you'd be interested in using it. And um, if you have any queries, just give us a shout on it. Um, I just want to go back to my presentation here just to show you some final points on it. Um, so we've gone through all those different options here in addition and some very good features here but they may not be in your as part of the license that you currently have with um with microsoft office 365 but you can enable these features so sharepoint 
basically is great if you're in a regulated environment. So you can turn on auditing and governance and um, you can really control who has access to what and you can get down to the auditing level basically tracks every movement everyone makes within the system and you have full history of access and who has access to your files, who made what changes, all that sort of, all those um, auditing features are available as well. There's another feature as well called data loss prevention where this is very powerful and I can see this taken off in a lot of places that if you go to your document library, you can put on particular labels onto documents that you could mark them as sensitive documents, um, which would prevent people from downloading them, which would prevent because you put in policy rules which prevents this stuff from happening automatically. You can prevent people from downloading them or attaching them into Outlook and sending them off as an email. If they try to do that, they will get a warning to say you're trying to share some sensitive company information and sure you want to proceed. Now you can put a policy in there that automatically blocks that or you can put a policy in that warns the user, but also would email the relevant compliance officer in your organization to tell you that, that the users just shared some sensitive information. So it's it, they're very powerful. Like um, you're really getting down to kind of GDPR sort of stuff there that um, you have total control over your documents and it's to prevent the leaking of information, whether that's maliciously or whether it's accidentally, it, it doesn't matter. The policies will control that. Um, automated file versioning. So we've seen, we touched on that briefly as well where you have uh, up to 500 versions of the same, of a file and you can keep track on um, different files. You can also check out documents and create actual versions like v1, v2 and you can validate documents as well. And this is the feature here I was talking about where you can have integration with forms or Power Automate or Microsoft. It used to be known as Microsoft Flow. So with forms, obviously, you've got the holiday request forms or any other use cases you can think of. It's all very customizable. With Power Automate, you can have particular things happen automatically in the background. So it's kind of like a flow chart. So if you perform a particular action, it will perform another action. Like if you save a document, it may email five people to say you've you've edited that file and it's now up for review. So it re might request people to review a document or something like that. But there's countless amount of um, things you can do with Power Automate and Microsoft Forms. So it's worthwhile kind of investigating that to see if it would fit into something you might want to do with, or, with your organization. But all the staff at SharePoint at the basic level and build it up, don't attempt to do it all at once because um, it will be very overwhelming. Um, some limitations and considerations and then I'll wrap up after this. Um, so when you're syncing your document library, it isn't ideal for use with AutoCAD or any other drawing applications because they use other types of technology and certain bits of files might not be all located in the one location, so you could have broken paths within a, a drawing document or anything like that. So it's not recommended at the moment for use with AutoCAD or any other of those design applications. Um, Windows 7, well, because it's out of support with Microsoft and um, you're not going to get any more security updates, that should be reason enough not to use Windows 7 anyways. But, um, it also does not support the files on demand feature, which I think I didn't cover there, but files on demand with OneDrive basically means you can have all your files available to you on your laptop, but it only downloads the files you're actually using, so it's not taking up any space on your hard drive, so it's a very cool feature. Um, just to consider, if you're considering moving or migrating to SharePoint, just consider how good your broadband is like um, it will work fine with your data up there on a poor internet connection, but getting the data up there can be the issue. So um, if you're migrating up gigs and gigs of data, if you're planning to move it yourself, um, just talk to us and we'll we'll come up with a migration plan that we can get it moved without kind of killing the internet connection for the rest of your business. And then the two final features then, um, you've 30 days to recover a deleted file. So if you delete a file, you've 30 days to pull it back from the recycle bin. You can do that yourself. 
But if you don't notice after 30 days and you notice the file isn't there, you have another 63 days to recover that file. But you need to talk to us in Trojan to recover that file from the administrator recycle bin. So, um, so essentially you have 93 days to get a file back if you delete it. But on top of all this, I'd recommend that you go with another cloud backup, which backs up the SharePoint site to another location. Just it's kind of a belt and braces approach. Look, Microsoft say they'll never be down, but you can never say never. So um, you have to keep that in mind. So look, there's some resources. You'll have these files, uh, this PowerPoint deck at the end, you'll be emailed out to you. So you can follow these links and have further look into SharePoint if you want. And if anyone has any questions, fire them up there on the screen and I'll try and answer them. Or if not, we can wrap That's up. great, that's great. Thanks, Dr. Thanks, Dr. I know we went a bit over there this morning, but um, I did get feedback last time that we had rushed through it a bit too much with OneDrive, so I wanted to give you some time there today. Okay, no, that's perfect. I will add the icons into the presentation that you were going through on the um, file explorer because I know sometimes they can be a little hard to see when they're on the screen, they're quite small. So I'll add those into the PowerPoint with the definition beside them so that you can see them in bigger uh, vision when you get the email from us today. And also I know Declan mentioned forms there as well a good bit and we haven't done a webinar on forms. If anyone would like to see that in more detail, do let us know. We can always run a webinar on that and show you how to use that a bit more. Um, or if there's anything else that you'd like us to add into the into the webinar series on PowerPoint or any other products there, just let us know and we'll try and we'll try and add it into the series as well. But that was all for this morning. So thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, next week we'll be looking at Teams. So we're going through that and kind of the, the different features that it has and different etiquette when using Teams. So I hope you can join us then and thank you very much. It's great. Thanks everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye.